think it's a confusing time. I mean, when you start the day uh, and markets appear to have triggered, this, this sell-off seems to have been triggered by an announcement in Thailand and New Zealand, then clearly there's a lot of confusion out there. I mean, right. I think investors are trying to come to ter terms with where the Fed is headed because the messaging has not been terribly clear. I think uh, investors are trying to come to terms with this new situation that it's unraveling with China, which is clearly headed for a worse place than a better place anytime soon. And then, of course, we're sort of grappling with the earnings season right now, and it's been a very mixed bag. And so figuring out where the direction is is, is, a, is a difficult moment right now. I mean, the main question hanging over all of this seems to be, let's say the U.S. gets lower yields because global yields are sinking and countries have other problems. Do we benefit from that? You know, Tom Lee earlier was making some points about how that should help equities and, you know, increase uh, M&A activity and have positive effects if you happen to be a you know, mortgage borrower right now. You know, that's the, the glass half full. The glass half empty is, nope, the U.S. is going into recession. Everything's going down right. from here. Well, I think clearly we all know a recession is coming at some point. Uh, I think what the data says to us, though, is that when it comes, uh, it is more likely than not to be relatively mild, nothing like the big sell-offs we've had, you know, certainly the global financial crisis, anything like that. Uh, we have a fairly balanced economy. The consumer balance sheets are strong. Corporate balance sheets are strong. Uh, consumer sentiment is quite good. Unemployment is low. All those things that I can tell you that you already know. I think the big question for uh, longer-term investors, whether we're able to extend this cycle, really depends on whether companies are reinvesting their earnings in capital expenditure and fixed assets. That has not been happening, I think, in large part because of the trade uncertainty. But maybe that settles down a little bit and we see a renewal of that. The other big question, I'll just add, jump in, the other big uh, uh, moving part in all of this is the Chinese government. U.S. companies and the Chinese government, does the Chinese government do more? They have a lot of tools at their disposal to make sure that their slowdown is much more managed and, and boost global demand in the end. Yeah, and they have a, a system in which the leader is unified, uh, is a unified leader. That leader controls the central bank. That leader controls fiscal policy. That leader does not have to answer or move legislation through uh, uh, two houses of Congress, one of which opposes... He can make the Go ahead, please. Yeah. He, he, can set the, he can set the rates with a phone call, not a Sure, tweet. sure. So, right. so let me ask you, I'm not sure that it makes a hell of a lot of difference, Christopher, but, but if, if the United States goes into a recession, will it be one of those very rare cases where we effectively import the recession from overseas because global demand slows, or will the recession be native to the United States? I'm not sure that it makes all that much difference other than academically, but I'm, I'm curious to your thoughts. Well, I think what we have seen, I think you're, the, what you just said is absolutely right. It doesn't really matter, uh, you know, who hits you in the face, you're getting yeah. hit in the face. <laughs> I think uh, the broader question is, you know, we seem to have had this slowdown, seems to have been coming from weakness in Europe, a slowdown in China. I don't think China is, you know, the disaster that some analysts paint it to be. I think they're very much in control of the deceleration in the economy there. But it clearly has been a, a serious headwind to the United States, in addition to, you know, further uncertainty about our earnings, our reinvestment in our companies, and, and whether or not we can extend this cycle even longer than the historical record it's already set. So if you uh, had to put a wager, what do you think the odds are that there is a trade deal between the United States and China within, say, the next year? I think it's quite low, and I think I would actually dodge your question a little bit by saying it almost doesn't matter. I think those of us who've been looking at this relationship for some time understand that it is a very, there are a lot of issues on the table more than just Chinese purchases of agricultural goods. Um, China is a very different kind of system. It, it follows different sets of economic rules. Any deal that gets done is going to be limited and temporary, and we're going to be going back and forth no matter who is president over the next four, six, ten years. And working out this relationship, it will involve tariffs, it will involve retaliation. And the hope is that with that back and forth, there will be a new uh, modus operandi where the two sides can understand one another and where investors can find um, some sort of clarity to forecast where they should be building their supply chains, right. where they can expect to enter markets.